there everybody, I'm Elizabeth Hines and welcome to my office. It's the end of the month and that can only mean one thing, it is time for a garden update. So if you're new here, I welcome you. I'm so glad that you're here. I am a functional medicine health coach. Um, I homeschool my kids. Um, let's see, what else? I've been married to my wonderful husband for close to 20 years now and I love to share with people about our healthy eating and healthy lifestyle. I have Crohn's disease. I've had this disease that I've known of for um, 10, 11 years now. Uh, my husband has type one diabetes and those things make our children more susceptible to autoimmune disease. So way back when I was diagnosed with Crohn's, I started figuring out how I could manage it without it managing me, basically. And I've always loved to cook. I've enjoyed um, creating recipes and sharing good food with people that I love and enjoy eating good food myself. And so I knew that I had to figure out a way that I could continue to do that um, and feel well with these new health challenges that I was dealing with. And also taking care of a husband with a chronic disease. So our family decided to go paleo um, seven or eight years ago. We follow a, a primarily grain-free, largely dairy-free, really free of all the refined oils and sugars and that sort of thing. We eat lots of goodies like chocolate chip cookies made with almond flour and um, honey and maple syrup and dates and things like that. We are not deprived by any means. Um, we eat really well and we feel really well and that um, just makes all the hard work that goes into it worth it. Um, so I'd like to share my recipes, these um, kind of down home country cooking, old fashioned, I'm from the Midwest. That's the way I was taught to cook by my grandparents and my mother, um, meat and potatoes and gravy and all that, you know, comforting stuff. Um, but we have twisted things up. So we eat a lot of really fresh vegetables and um, wholesome meats and things. And then um, we occasionally will throw in treats like chicken pot pie and like those chocolate chip cookies I was telling you about. Um, and part of what we do is we grow as many vegetables as we can. We're very blessed to have a yard that when we bought the house, the people who owned the house before us were putting in a pond and we were about to have our first child. And so we asked them if they would fill in that pond for us and they did. And so then we were left with this nice, large open area without trees right around it. And so we planted a garden really early in our time here. And we've been in this house for 16 years um, because that means that my baby is 16. Um, so we, um, this year with COVID and all just the crazy stuff going on and food is not in the grocery store, the food we usually buy isn't there. It's way more expensive than normal. There's still concerns about food uh, potential food shortages, which is very unusual for us in the United States. So I decided this year I was really going to up my garden game. I've always grown tomatoes and squash and peppers and, you know, occasionally another thing here or there in the summer. I've dabbled with some winter, fall, spring veggies here and there, but was never very consistent with it. And with just the climate in our world right now, not climate, the weather, but you know, what's going on. I decided this year I was gonna pay extra attention and really try to keep my garden going year round. I live in the Piedmont, which is like the middle of North Carolina. We're so blessed here. We have the coast on one side and we have the mountains on the other. Um, and we live in the middle and we do get heat in the summer for sure. And we usually have very dry conditions in the summer. Um, but our winters are typically fairly mild. We might get one or two little snows. We have cold weather, but if we don't get a lot of real hard freezes. Um, and so there are some crops that we can grow pretty much year round here. I went to my state extension service and looked up what grows here. When do I plant it? What, you know, what time, what should I plant? That sort of thing. And I made a list. And so, whereas we plant our summer veggies in April, typically after the, the last frost, and that's the tomatoes and the peppers and the squash and the okra and that sort of thing, we can continue to plant throughout the season. So in July, my extension service told me I could plant green beans, carrots, celery, and winter squash. Well, I wanted to, I really wanted all of those, but space is a factor. So I decided to go for green beans and carrots. So those I am about to show you in my garden, how they're coming along that I planted in July. In August, they told me I could plant cabbage, kale, parsnips, and broccoli. And you know, 
I planted all four of those and I'm going to show you in the video and I forgot about the cabbage, but I did plant cabbage in one of those beds and I just forgot to point it out to you. So there are a bunch of little seedlings you'll see and they are cabbage, kale, parsnips, and broccoli. Coming up in September, I'm going to plant some more lettuces, different types of lettuce, spinach, and onions. And I believe I ordered onion seeds, but typically people plant onions from what are called sets, which are like little baby onions. And um, I, those were not available to me. So I'm going to still try to get some onion sets. Um, but just in case I can't, I do have the seeds. And so that will kind of be the end of my planting until um, kind of late winter, I guess I'll start in with some spring things. So what you're going to be seeing from me now is kind of how the summer stuff is winding down or not. You'll have to wait and see. And then how I'm planting throughout these late summer, early fall months and how the fall and winter garden come, comes along. So I say this only to encourage you. Um, I certainly don't believe in you know, shaming or like, oh, I'm doing this. You can do it too. Cause I know everybody has a different kind of yard and you have different amounts of sunlight and time and resources and that sort of thing, or even desire. But I'm assuming if you're watching this, you have some sort of a desire to, to grow a garden. Um, but you can do it in a very small plot. You can plant things in pots. You can plant um, like tomato plants in a bale of hay. So you don't have to have the type of land like I do. You don't have to have raised beds. My raised beds are very simple, um, two by 12 boards. We built them well over 10 years ago um, and brought in soil that one time and we just continue to amend the soil. So um, it is something that if you want to invest in, I think it's worth a little bit of an investment and then you'll be able to reap the rewards for many, many years. So follow along as we uh, take a trip through my garden. I'll show you what's growing today and um, I hope you're encouraged and just enjoy this little peaceful walk through the garden today. Thanks for watching as always. I really appreciate you being here and I'll be back next week with another great recipe from the kitchen. Welcome back to my backyard, everybody. Let's see what's happening with the flowers and then we'll head up to the garden. So it's late August. There's really not a ton happening with the flowers. There's one pretty little white iris and there are a couple more about to bloom. Those are my daisies, which I need to deadhead again, but they really just bloom once and then they're done for the season. They were really beautiful when they were blooming. Daylilies too, but they're done. So these are my knockout roses. I just want to talk to you about these for just a second because these are about 10 years old and I love them because they're beautiful and they're super easy to maintain. So once they, they like one batch of blooms have finished, I'll trim them back. So I want to show you what to do. So just don't trim them right under the bloom. You need to find a stem where there are at least five leaves, like you can see there, and trim below a stem with five leaves. Now I cut mine way, way, way back, but you just need to get to at least a place where there are five leaves. All right, let's take a look at the veggies now. This looks pretty darn good for late August, honestly. Usually by this time of the season, we've had so much extreme heat and extreme drought conditions, and then we'll get like some huge downpours, and those just are not the, the best conditions for the vegetables. Um, but as I've shown you in my last videos, I've worked really hard to keep things alive and producing. And I want to show you how that's gone. So right there we have a zucchini plant and look at its leaves are nice and healthy. Now there is white on the leaves. Um, and I'll tell you about that in a second. So you can see that little baby zucchini there. So remember last month I showed you how I put the soil conditioner and the manure on that main stem of my squash and zucchini plants because they will root out of that stem, all along the stem, to try to keep them alive. And lo and behold, it has worked. I've continued to get um, a couple of zucchini every week and a couple of yellow squash. Um, the one in that bed um, isn't looking quite as good, but the yellow squash, I'm gonna show you in just a second. I gotta climb inside my rabbit fence. Oh, let's look back at the zucchini. So you can see how healthy that main stem is. 
and there are blooms and one little baby zucchini. Can you see him back there? I've had a lot of bees, so I'm hoping we'll continue to have these flowers pollinated. Um, I had to put some pest pesticide actually on my leaves because my squash, look at all those yellow squash, they were just producing like crazy and then they would be the right size to pick, I would pick them and they would just be full of bugs and so I decided I wanted the squash, I would wash them really well and so I treated them a little bit. There's a nice pretty one today um, and I looked it over and there were actually no wormholes. I took a little twin squash. I had quite a lot of those actually. Look at it. Pretty, pristine, no bugs. Awesome. I'll make my little pile of veggies over here. I forgot to bring out my pan. I usually put them in. So this is a zucchini. This bed has kind of gotten a little bit out of control. I haven't done this great of a job taking care of that one. But that plant is still alive and I just got a zucchini off of him earlier in the week. This one looks a little bit better. new leaves coming out still. Our weather has been more mild than it typically is. So over in this bed I have some bell peppers. One succumbed to either moles or bowls or chipmunks or something. Something ate it from the roots. Um, these are this pretty lime green color and then they turn yellow. These are parsnips. So last week I planted parsnip seeds in this bed and I had previously planted some carrot seeds and they took a long time to come up. That's a weed. Trying to find the carrot. See those little tiny green leaves? There's one. That's a carrot. And that's a carrot. That one actually looks like a carrot, doesn't it? So I'm hoping more of those come up. The carrots have been kind of hard um, to get to come up, but the parsnips came up really fast. There had been a cucumber there and I, I ripped it out. So I have one cucumber left. This one was the healthiest looking and was still producing a good number of cucumbers. We're done with our pickle making for the season and frankly we don't eat that many cucumbers, so um, I just kept this one guy alive. They're all growing kind of funky shapes like that. It's so funny how they change through the season. Um, look at that tiny little it's like, it's fat, you want to pick it now or it'll get too seedy, but it was super short. Um, there's another one hiding back there. Can you see it on the other side of the fence? I'll have to get to him when I walk over there. So my banana peppers have gone crazy. These are super mild ones, and I pickled a whole bunch last week. I pick, pickled a pack of pickled peppers, um, and they are super yummy. Um, so we're enjoying those. And I'll just cut them up and I'll put them in eggs or stir fries or, or whatever, all sorts of different things. All right, these are my bush beans, which I thought bush beans would grow like a bush. That's what I have had before, but these are definitely climbing. So when they start to produce their beans, we'll see what the beans look like. The plants look healthy, um, but I'm really intrigued by uh, what exactly is going to come of these plants. <laughs> they were not what I was expecting. Um, so I didn't plant them where they would have something to climb onto, so I'm going to grab a couple of my old tomato steaks and just kind of stick them down here in the in the center um, so that those vines have something to grow on and it looks like they're going to grow pretty tall and will eventually end up being able to latch onto the my big structure that I showed you before that goes up and over each bed. So I'm pulling out that tomato cage I had on that pepper that bit the dust so I'm just going to stick that kind of down in the center of where all those bean plants are <clears throat> and that will give them a lot of places to climb onto. So we'll just gently kind of guide them to it. The, the vines is kind of sticky. You'll see there it's wrapped around that pole and so if I just continue to guide them over there they'll, they'll eventually stick, latch on and continue to grow up that way. So I'm curious to see what happens with those guys. So this is kind of my jungle bed that um, the cherry tomato got a little bit jungly and I just, I don't know, this poor little bed, I haven't paid as much attention to it. So we had a whole bunch of rain all at once and every year this happens and when it does, my tomatoes burst. I don't know what happened to that pepper. Um, 
these are green peppers and they'll turn red and so they'll produce way into September. This bed I planted kale and broccoli and they I planted them just one week ago and they've sprouted so I'm going to wait till they get a little bit bigger and I'll thin them out and I'll explain to you how, how I do that. And then the next month hopefully I'll have big plants to show you. There was a cucumber in there that was not looking good, so I pulled them out. Um, take these little cucumbers over here. They love to hide. They're, oh, there was another one over there. Those are nice, healthy, normal looking ones. So here's another cherry tomato, and I'll kind of show you up close what happens when we get so much rain all at once. They just, um, there's a good one. They they burst open, they grow so fast with so much water, they burst open, then they attract bugs and they just rot. They just rot right there on the vine. Um, if I happen to catch one when it has just split open and there aren't any bugs on it, I'll pick it and we can just eat it right then. Um, but they won't last, they will go back very, very quickly. So some are rotting before they've even ripened. It's very sad. But we have enjoyed lots and lots of cherry tomatoes this season, so we're, we're not deprived, but it's always sad to see them go. I think I ended up with maybe a dozen, maybe 15 on this particular day out of my four plants. You can see there how the skin just splits. They were a lot of, um, you see them buzzing around? They, they look like fruit flies to me, and I've never, I've never had those in my garden before. I'm not sure exactly what they are or how to get rid of them. I really try not to use pesticides, but you know, I'm, I'm not 100% opposed to it. I want to keep my vegetables, you know. So these are my yellow tomatoes, the lemon boys. And again, we had a lot of these. I was able to tan a few quarts, um, but they're doing the same thing as the cherries. They just are bursting open and then oh, go through the crumble. And then they attract bugs. And so they're just, wasted. This one that has just a few little splits, I'm going to try to keep that one. There are a good number of green ones hanging on that are that are coming along and so I'm hoping that we'll get a few more nice, plump yellow tomatoes this season. So you see, there are a lot of green ones on there. My kids have been, or at least one of the kids, I can't remember which one, um, has been asking me to make fried green tomatoes. So if nothing else, I'll have some green tomatoes that I can try to make some paleo fried green tomatoes. It sounds good, doesn't it? See, they're just, I mean, they're just a big rotting mess. And the thing is, when it gets like that, they start to really stink. And then, I don't want to come out. If they're just the spots, I'll eat them. But if they have actual holes, bug holes, I'll throw them out. So here's today's haul. Two not ripe yellow tomatoes, a few cucumbers, that one pretty yellow squash and a few cherry tomatoes. We're having salad for dinner, so we'll enjoy those right away. So there's the garden at the end of August, everybody. And my garden gloves, it was about to rain the last time I worked out there, so I stuck them on the, on the little fence poles so that um, the rain would just wash the mud off of them, and then I left them there to dry. And that is the state of my garden in late August. Thanks for touring around with me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like, share, and subscribe so we can keep this channel going. And don't forget to come back next week. I have an amazing barbecue beef recipe for the Instant Pot.